वेलकम एवरी वन टूडे वी हैव विद अस मिस्टर कृष्ण मल्होत्रा हिज पार्टनर इन ध्रुवा एडवाइजर्स इन दिस डिस्कशन वी विल सोली फोकस ओनली ऑन इंटरनेशनल टैक्सेशन सो माई फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज रिलेटिंग टू सेक्शन नाइन ऑफ द इनकम टैक्स एक्ट गवर्नमेंट हैज इंट्रोड्यूस प्रोविजन्स टू डिटरमाइन द लोकेशन ऑफ फंड मैनेजर्स इन इंडिया बट वी हैव सीन दैट सच प्रोविजन्स आर नॉट सक्सेसफुल सो बट बट वी कैन एक्सपेक्ट इन दिस अपकमिंग यूनियन बजट so see one of the reasons if you would look at it government came out in 2015 applicable from 1416 that in case if you have a eligible manager in india and his presence would not really make any business connection or his presence would not make your income taxable provided you need to satisfy cert fund needs to satisfy few conditions now conditions are many and they are quite enormous in terms of and they are very onerous i should say because some of the condition that you should have at least 25 members the overall the size of the fund should be at least 100 crores and 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 then you cannot invest more than 25% of the corpus now these are the thing like 100 crore fund why not smaller funds why there is a limit if at all we wanted to give by satisfying certain conditions why to have a limit of minimum of 100 why should we say there should be at least 25 members even the smaller funds with smaller uh, fund capital less than 25 should also be made eligible and then there are certain requirement that you need to give declaration you need to get certificate from chartered accountants and and satisfying all the conditions and then certifying the same that yes you are complying with all that has made the things little onerous and as a result people are little reluctant to really comply with that and some of them are not even practically possible because of the kind of structures they have so i think that may be the reason that i think government should think through to see that how uh, how in this uh, budget some of the strenuous conditions which are imposed should really be eased out moving further what changes can government bring with respect to the indirect transfer now in terms of indirect tax provisions i think one of the things which they introduced last year was when they talk about substantial interest in india when they say 50% and and when through explanation 7 when it is defined that an individual a uh, person should not have a contro- exercise control which is fine but in terms of holding voting right or share capital or interest in the company to the tune of 5% individually by the company or individual or group of the entities from the same group in the fund now 5% is too small so therefore i think there is a request by the company because 5% and the moment you say 5% and above means everything which is indirect would also be included so 5% is the limit which is i think is is being considered as too low and, they, and i think there is a request by the government to make it 26% that is one second uh, second thing which we uh, talk about is in terms of asset, uh, uh, you know assets located in india now the point is if there is an indian company which holds assets outside india but indian company exist in india and in their balance sheet they have some asset which are outside india would also be considered as assets in india for the purpose of considering the substantial interest in india so therefore i think some sort of uh, uh, clarification i think is required and second thing is that if fpi when they sells uh, any equity or any any of their investments they are subject to the capital gains but the point is that those the, you know the members who are the members of um fpn when fpa redeems those units in favor of their members the way the wordings are it appears to be yes maybe they would also be taxed which lead to taxing the same thing twice so there is a double taxation by me so i think that needs to be clarified and maybe one of the reasons when now the circular recently you know relating to fip fpi has been kept on hold so i think government needs to ensure that there should not be a double taxation and the limit of 5% should be increased and and the definition of assets located in india needs to be defined uh, what is your opinion on place of effective management guidelines so there has been a request by the industry and uh, that because the kind of definition and the kind of uh, the the way when you read is so uh, so 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 vast that there is a lot of Uh, ambiguity and subjectivity in the hands of the authorities so i think the request is that why not to defer poem or instead of defer i think scrap uh, poem and maybe cfc is a better concept which they should try to bring in but interestingly now just a day back uh, the government has come out with the rules and regulations and they have come out with a complete clarification on this it appears to be it may not be scrapped 
but i think the request of the industry is that yes it should be scrapped and instead of that maybe they can think of in terms of introducing cfc guidelines which is a better concept as compared to introducing poem there is always a dispute on attribution of profits to indian pe so can we expect any clarification in this upcoming budget you see this attribution of uh, the profits towards pe is something which is not only akin to india but it is worldwide the moment as the pe concept is so wide the attribution is also very subjective based on the functions which are performed by the pe but but interestingly in our indian rules we have a rule 10a which talks about uh, which talks about how the attribution how attribution should be done unfortunately the rule is hardly being used because it is not very detailed rule uh, so i think there is a request uh, by the industry to say that if we have such rules which really helps in bringing consistency in attribution of uh, uh, profits to p once we already have those rules why not to come out with a detailed rule and with a clear guidelines and maybe come out with illustrations so that one can really try to cover up all kinds of uh, cases and to an extent we can bring some sort of consistency in this i think it is something which would be very well appreciated so uh, do you think there will be any changes with regard to the gift tax provisions under the income tax act no there is no gift tax only thing is that this we have a section uh, 567a which talks about that if you transfer any property or any shares which is more than 50000 rupees uh then certainly it would be considered in case if it is not in your close relationship especially for individuals then in that case anything more than 50000 would be taxable in the hands of recipient as income from other sources now the way the section is drafted it appears as if the foreign company would also fall into that so if if at all a foreign company which has no presence in india would also be covered in case especially in the transactions which are more mergers and acquisition which worldwide globally takes place and at times in the transaction when you read the section there appears to be as if the foreign companies are also taxable and in case if they are taxable there is no clarity whether one can really go and take a resort to the treaties or not and at times when they go for the contribution to the firm or to the company by way of fresh allotment of shares etc then the valuations on that so so there are issues which are related to to foreign companies in such situations and and i think there i think the we need a clarification that the intention does not seems to be that just to include the foreign companies in such situations but but the way the wording the way the current wordings are it appears to be it is broad enough to include even the foreign companies so what is your take on alternate investment funds so in the case of alternate uh, investment funds you know there are three categories of funds cat 1 cat 2 and cat 3 and interestingly in cat 1 and cat 2 there is a complete pass through but in uh, category 3 kinds of funds there is no pass through which is being uh, provided so there has been a consistent request by the company to in to give the same uh, facility to category 3 funds also that is uh, that is one and uh, second is interestingly is that when you say the pass through so if any income which is earned by a trust uh, by the fund it goes to the individuals because it is purely a pass through but in case if there is a losses in the hands of the funds those are not being transferred to the individuals so which is absolutely inconsistent with the basic principle when you are transferring the income why not you transfer the losses so that they can take the benefit whatever income they generate so that that, that that's a lacuna lacuna which which persists and there has been a request by the company to consider the same now one last question do you expect any announcement with regard to real estate investment trust now in the real estate investment trust i think reit has been a very welcome step many years back which was introduced but we did not see much of the activities in that it was not it has a great potential but still there are some gaps there are certain apprehensions in some of the industries uh, so so if 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 you look at it there are some requirements there have been some request and and uh, the recommendations which has gone are something relating to we are saying that currently in the case of reits they enjoy the pass through in respect of dividend and interest but interestingly the same pass through is not there in the capital gain that's one so where there is a request by the company secondly when we look at it in terms of uh, the units of the reits 
even though they are listed they the period of holding in order to consider the same as a long term capital gain is considered 36 months as against 12 months so again once the re units are listed why not to consider the period of holding to the extent of 12 months like in the case of the listed shares bringing it at par with them so that's number 2 which i think has been the demand for so long the second important point if you look at the structure of reit is the reits usually have spvs spvs 1 2 3 which and each spv have some properties so when spvs are transferred to reits on the transfer of the shares of spv they are exempt from the capital gain but in case if someone has a property not in spv but wanted to transfer a property to reit or or you have a situation that you have properties in llp and you wanted to transfer the interest of llp into the reit then the 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 exemption on 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 account of the long term capital gain or on the capital gain are not enjoyed in such situations so i think that's one lacuna when we are giving the same to spvs with the transfer their shares why not in the case of properties or interest in llp that is one and second point is that at times the structures are that you have a reit and below reit you have a holding company and then holding companies have made different spvs so when the spvs declares the dividend to the reit that is not subject to ddt so there is no dividend distribution tax but however if you have a holding company in between and it is issued to the holding company which cannot hold the money and they distribute the back to the reit it is just like a complete pass through since it is going in the hands of hold co and not seeing the substance of the overall transaction they are not exempt from ddt so i think there is if the structures are having holding company and then you are having different spvs below that why not when hold hold co is treated why not it is being treated as a pass through and why not the benefit of ddt which is given directly to the reit should not also be given in this situation because ultimately when hold co would issue the shares to ddt uh, to to reit maybe the ddt it can be levied but at this point we find the way the structures are such benefits are not given to the hold co and hold co should be treated as in a pass through thank you so much sir for your valuable time and participating in this budget talk session it's my pleasure